This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial. And in this lesson, I'm very excited to talk about what is new in the newly released 8.4 update for Avid Media Composer. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna cover all of the major points of the new release. And what I'm also gonna do at the end is I'm gonna throw up a screen where we're gonna talk about just some things we didn't cover. They might be important for your workflow, so I wanna make sure that they are mentioned. What I do encourage you to do is for all the details on this new release, you can simply head on over to Google and type in what's new Media Composer 8.4 to find the white paper for it to get all of the in-depth details. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, now as you can see, we are at the project selection window and this is really where our first big new feature comes into play for the 8.4 update of Avid Media Composer. And of course, I'm talking about true resolution independence. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, editors who are coming from Final Cut Pro 7 or even Premiere Pro are accustomed to being able to get in and create a project any frame size that they want. If they were making it for digital signage, it could be, you know, 632 pixels by, you know, 100 pixels, really based on their needs. Inside of Media Composer, we didn't really have that option. What we would have to do is either take all our footage and export it, create that, you know, billboard inside of a, an application like Adobe's After Effects, or we'd have to get in and really sort of create things however we want, centered in the screen, and then use an application like Squeeze to crop it to the dimensions that we needed to. Well, we don't have to worry about that anymore because now we can simply just get in and create a project any size that we want. And to do that is very simple. All I'm gonna do is simply navigate to New Project. You'll see that I can come to the Format dropdown and you'll see that we have our standard project sizes here. But right down at the bottom, we do have a new one called, appropriately enough, Custom. I can get in, enter my raster dimensions, the color space, and the frame rate, uh, whatever frames per second I want. I can even tell it if it's stereoscopic, if it happened to be. In this case, it's not. We can also save the preset, and of course, we would want to give the project a name. Now, a lot of people think, well, you know, when would I ever need to do something like this? Well, let me give you a perfect example. I do a lot of stuff for Instagram in my day-to-day -day job, and my Instagram dimensions are appropriately enough one-to-one. -one. That's the aspect ratio. So I normally end up having to take all that footage and export it to After Effects and create the Instagram file there. I would rather just do it inside a Media Composer. And now I have the ability to do that. Let me show you how simple it is. I'm simply gonna select my Instagram project. You're gonna notice the project type is 500 by 500 P 2997. And what I'm gonna do is simply say, okay. Now, once I'm in the project, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is simply AMA link to a clip. And we'll just, you know, we'll bring in a couple clips here. What I'm gonna do is right click. Now the only problem is, is that if you've now updated to 8.4 and you're looking for the AMA link to option, it really doesn't exist anymore the way that you know that it existed. What do I mean by that? Well, if I right click now, it's no longer referred to as AMA link to anymore. It's now just simply referred to as link to media. Now what I'm gonna do is just cancel out of that for a second because what's important to keep in mind is that we did have some AMA settings that went along with our AMA linking to. And of course, if I come to settings, you'll notice that if I scroll up to the top, they of course have been replaced with simply the link setting. As soon as I double click on it, it looks pretty much exactly the same as the AMA link to settings did. There's a one minor little update inside of the link options right down here at the bottom. You're gonna notice that we have some new parameters called properties of new clips. And how do you want Media Composer to treat them when they come in? Do you want them stretched, pillar box, letter box, center crop? center keep size, and we can even tell Media Composer to bring in standard def clips in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. I'm just gonna leave it as stretch for now. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna right click, we're gonna say link to media. I'll just select the first three clips here and I'm simply gonna say open. Now what I'm also gonna do here is I'm gonna call this first clip red, I'm gonna call the next clip blue, and let's call the next clip green, okay? And let's just bring one of them up here. And you're gonna notice that, of course, the footage is squeezed. Now, let me just see. That's actually a better example here. Gives you a little bit better view. You can see that we are really squashed in here because, of course, the frame actually extends way out here. Now, I could have brought it in and cropped it, but I wanted to show you this method for the purpose of showing you frame flex. What I'm gonna do, simply right-click on this clip. 
we're going to navigate down to our source settings and of course we're going to come to the frame flex option now you're going to see that frame flex is being shown to me up here in the top the aspect is 16 by 9 representing the clip that was brought in and this represents my frame size down here so all i'm going to do is tell frame flex well no 16 by 9 is not the aspect ratio you're going to use you're simply going to use one to one i'm going to say okay and you'll see now that things look much more correct than they did before all i have to do now is simply say apply i can now take this clip and let's just take a little bit of it here i'm just going to drop it into my timeline maybe we'll take a little bit more here there we go perfect and the cool thing is of course i can step into effects mode and i can adjust the frame flex window whenever i want so I can always make sure that in my Instagram one-to-one -one aspect ratio frame size, that no matter what the action is, it's always going to be centered inside of my frame. That's one of the beauties of FrameFlex, very flexible when it comes to workflows like that. Now something else that I should point out that you might have noticed down here on my clip. What you're probably accustomed to seeing is just that little green dot. What the green dot tells you is, hey editor, there's something going on under the hood of this clip. So just be aware of that, whether it's, you know, you've taken a you know 2398 clip and dropped it into a 2997 frame per second timeline, whether it's frame flex. The only problem is, is that you never really knew what was going on with that shot. You'd always have to step into effects mode or go back to source settings or, you know, all that type of stuff. Well, now we have a couple of icons that will be attached to our clip that will tell us exactly what is going on with each shot in our timeline. Now, of course, remember, this is assuming that you've AMA linked to it and you haven't transcoded and then mashed down, you know, any of your frame flex or color adapter options. So what exactly do these little icons mean, the T and the S? Well, the T stands for a temporal adapter, basically meaning a motion adapter. What this is telling me is, hey, Kev, you've taken a 2398 frame per second clip and dropped it into a 2997 frame per second timeline. The next one, S, stands for, of course, a spatial adapter. Spatial adapter is frame flex. This is telling me that I have frame flex going on on my clip. And if I had color adapters attached to this clip, where the little green dot is, I'd actually see a little C icon standing for, of course, color adapters. Now, to be honest with you, I really prefer it the way it was before. I like seeing the green dot. I really don't like seeing the T and the S on top of my clips. So is there a way to remove that? Well, there actually is. All I'm going to do is simply navigate right down here to the Fast menu. I'm going to come up to Show Adapters, and I can either choose which adapter I want to have shown. I can show them all. Or for me, I can have them show none. So there we go. Very cool. Everything looks pretty much the way that it did before. But I like just having the flexibility of if I want to get in and just see what's attached to this clip, I can do that if I want to. Okay, now before we move on, I just want to grab a couple other clips here. And I'm not going to worry about getting in and frame, fle frame flexing these clips because you sort of get the idea of how that works. And I'm just going to drop a couple of them into my timeline here. There we go. Very cool. Okay. So let's talk about another big new feature inside of Media Composer 8.4. And you'll remember in a previous update to Media Composer, we had the ability to get in and search for bins right up here at the top of the project window. We could simply type in the name of the bin that we wanted, or if you know we had a bunch of bins called, let's say, blue one, blue two, and we'd color-coded all of our bins, if I was to type in blue, Media Composer would obviously sift through and only show me those bins that have blue in the name of them. Well, why shouldn't we have the ability to do that in our timeline as well? Well, we do now as well with the ability to come in and search in our timeline. So if I came in and simply typed in red and hit enter, you'll see that as soon as I do that, Media Composer is going to jump to that clip that's called red. Now, what I should do here is let's drop red in again here. Okay, just so you get the idea of how this works. I'm just going to come back here. I'm simply going to type in red. I'm going to hit enter. You'll see that it's going to jump to that edit. What I could do is say, well, you know what? Let's go back and show me the previous clip in the timeline that's called red. This is a very, very cool and fast way to get in. If a producer says, oh, can you find that clip called blah, blah, blah in the timeline? You can simply just get in, type blah, 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 hit enter. It's going to jump down to that clip. Now, of course, the big question is, what exactly is Media Composer looking at when you type in a value in here? Well, if I come to my drop down here, you'll see that right now what it's doing is, is that it's looking for the visible timeline text. But of course, I could have it look at resolution, clip name, comments, markers, or of course, in most cases, you might really want to work with all. But for me, with the work that I do, because I'm really only dealing in sort of 30 second to 60 second promos, 
really the visible timeline text is good enough for me. But this is a very welcome addition to 8.4 of Media Composer because it really is just gonna let you get in and find clips in your timeline really in lightning speed. Okay, now for all you editors out there who love doing audio work inside a Media Composer, this one is definitely for you. What I'm gonna do is simply navigate over to Tools, I'm gonna come down to the Audio Track Effect, and let's just pick one here at random. Doesn't even really matter which one. I'm just gonna come down to Reverb, and let's just select the D-Verb Mono. Now once I select it, you're gonna see that this is the sort of the standard, you know, D-Verb. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this has been updated in the, since the last version of Media Composer. We now have access to AAX plugins, which are the same plugins that our friends that use Pro Tools have. But what's cool is that in 8.4, we now also have the presets that they have as well. So all of the presets that ship standard with these effects inside of Pro Tools are now available to you inside of Media Composer. And of course, you can save your own presets as well. If you happen to create a sound that you really like, you can save those presets and use them in any project you happen to be working on. So this is great. Just having all these presets is always a great place to start. So then you can then build sounds of your own. Okay. Now let's talk about something else, and this is something that's actually kind of important because there's been a little bit, you know, as Media Composer has advanced in certain places, certain things have stayed the same because it really hasn't needed to change in, you know, a great many versions. And one of those is the import and the export window. Now, let's talk about that here for a second. What I'm gonna do is simply right click, I'm gonna say import. Now it doesn't really matter what I'm gonna import. Uh, what does matter is I'm gonna to come to the options down here at the bottom. Now this is the same for both Mac and Windows. You're going to notice in here that we have a little bit of uh, wording changing in the color level section. We no longer have the RGB versus 601709. We now have color levels, do not modify, treat as legal range, or scale from full range to legal range. Now, why has that been changed? What I'm also going to do is cancel out here. Because if I also come in and I right click and I say export, you're going to notice that inside of the options here, that in the video format section, you'll see the color levels here reflect that of the import window, which is keep uh, as legal range or scale from legal to full range. Now, why would that be? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that, you know, a few versions ago with the implementation of the color adapters, which of course can be found in the source settings. Let's just close our export window here, right click on a clip, come down to source settings. If I come back to color encoding, you'll see right down here that we have the level scaling full range to video levels and level scaling video levels to full range. What the team at Avid wants to do is just to keep the wording of everything pretty much the same. They wanted to update the import and export tool to really reflect what's going on in the source settings window, specifically in the color encoding window. Okay, couple other little things that I do want to point out inside of 8.4 Media Composer. The first one being the ability now to display closed captioning inside of the sequence window. Previously, what we had to do if we had captioning in our timeline is we'd actually require a hardware display that we'd be able to send our image to with the data track enabled, and then we could see the closed captioning. Well, we actually have the ability now to see the closed captioning right inside the sequence window, and it's very simple to call up. Now, I don't have captioning on my clip right here, so you'll have to take my word for it, but what we would do is simply right click and come right down here to show captions. Okay, so this one was a big issue for editors that happen to be doing, you know, long format shows. And what they were doing was they were transcoding media of mixed frame rates inside of a specific project. The problem they ran into was that if they brought in a bunch of clips that were, let's say, 2398 into a 1080i project, and they transcoded those clips, Media Composer would take those clips and would automatically convert them to be 2997 frames per second, and then you wouldn't be able to go back and relink to the original raw media if you ever needed to. Now, inside of the 831 update of Media Composer, what we had the ability to do in larger than HD projects was transcode clips at their native frames per second. Well, with 8.4, what we now have the ability to do, if I simply right click on this clip and come up to consolidate transcode, inside the transcode option, you'll see that I have the ability, no matter what the frame rate of the clip that I've brought into this project, I have the ability to keep the source's frame rate whatever it happens to be. This is a big, 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 huge update to the transcode window and a much welcome one, especially if you wanna make sure that no matter what happens, all of your clips stay their original frame rate. Okay, now I think the last one that I'm gonna show you, if I navigate up to tools and I come down to the audio mixer, 
is the ability inside of the audio mixer not only to get in and monitor stereo in 5.1 and 7.1, but we now also have the ability to get in and to do a four channel output if we happen to have four speakers set up. And you'll see that we have some different configurations here. This is also a welcome update for Media Composer editors who want to get in and have a few more audio monitoring options than they've been accustomed to in the past. Okay, now these aren't the only updates inside of the 8.4 update of Avid Media Composer. There are a bunch of others that I'm showing you on the screen right now, but what I do encourage you to do, if you have the subscription option to Media Composer and you've already downloaded it, make sure you check out the README for the what's new inside of 8.4 Media Composer to get all of the updates to make sure that you're up on everything that's new because there are a few little things that have changed and have been updated so that way you'll be up and running with this new update as quickly and as easily as possible. Now before I wrap up this lesson I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.